sure. Okay, physically, 
Now, if something is a serious crime that's being committed, you make a point. You don't stand around with your hands in your pockets, sir. Bernie Sanders has sat on his hands. He's saying very nice things, but he's not calling for a ceasefire. And he's voting, he continues to vote for the arms. He's going to keep going over there. Where, where, where were you guys when Hezbollah was killed in 1400? We're not years? here to argue huh? a military. We would have prevented on. that if we're we here. Would. And we should prevent, prevent, right. prevent 20,000 Palestinians who were killed. This is not a military uh, demonstration. Your service, sir. You were third generation. Were you in the military? No, but he was. And I think you were in the service right if now. If you were third generation, 70 or third generation, put in an outdoor prison camp, they can't come and go without the military. I know of one case. You're not going to solve anything on the ladder, sir. <laughs> well, are you going to solve anything, sir? We're trying to get Bernie. All for a ceasefire. We know hard feelings. We're doing what we have to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to ask Bernie Sanders to call for a ceasefire. He has not done that. For six to seven weeks, the bombs have been falling nearly nonstop. a city the size of New York. The people are not able to leave that city. They are trapped. And yet, our money and our bombs continue to ravage that population. Now that is a war crime. Half of those people are children. So we're here to put up a ladder at the inconvenience of the store owners, I apologize. But they are not losing their children right now. And we are not either, but we are paying our taxes. And when we pay our taxes, we fund the Israeli military and all militaries. Russian people are funding their military, and we're funding ours. The Israeli people are funding. Those bombs are, are manufactured, and they are manufactured by the millions, okay? So it's up to us to tell our senator and our representatives that we will not tolerate civilians being destroyed. It's a war crime. It's against all international norms. There's no question. The whole world is asking us to stop this, because we fund the Israeli military. Now, I would like to invite anyone else who's here to speak. They can come to the ladder and speak. They're being filmed. If they have something to say about what they feel, it can be in any opinion, because this is a democracy. So, but we feel that we need to protest this. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. I follow the news very carefully. I'm a two-tour Vietnam combat medic with the Air Force, so I know what war is. I've seen the dead kids, collateral damage. I've seen people burned to death. And I've watched the war in Iraq. My best friend is an asylum person from Iraq. I have friends now in Palestine. I just took a chunk of my savings and sent a friend of mine to Palestine two months ago. So, this um, man was in Vietnam, by the way. He's with, a, he's with a group called Veterans for Peace. And there's a very large organization in the United States of Vietnam veterans. They're speaking from experience. They've seen what it's like to be inside of an attack of, of heavy munitions. So go ahead, I'm sorry. No. Well, here's the thing. The American Revolution, you know what King George said about the Americans who revolted? They're terrorists. They're traitors. Kill them. So that's what's going on right now. All this news I hear, Hamas, an illegal organization, illegal this, the Houthis, an illegal. What the hell is legal? 
And who made, who made Israel a legal country? Israel is a bastard child of France and England on an agreement at the end of World War II. They're worried where are all these Jews going to go? And in Zionists, they wanted to go in Boston, could end up in Madagascar or some other places. Basically, they wanted to go to Israel. And the whole thing was a people without a land for a land without people. Maybe at that point they already considered the Palestinians weren't people. But they went, they bought up a lot of property, and for generation after generation, Jews, Muslims, uh, Christians, they got along fine. Off the same neighborhoods. Hey Dave. Let Crystal speak after you. Yeah. Thanks. So um, so who makes so what? Hamas, the Houthis? Everybody else, they're illegal organizations. Who made Israel a legal country? Who gave them the right to come in and start displacing people? And right from the very beginning, they started taking people's home. Well, be hot. this home's been assigned to me. Just take your stuff and go. Uh, you know, there's no morality in this. If anybody's an illegal country, an illegal military, it's the Israelis. Maybe they ought to go take a bunch of tents and live out of Sinai. But what they're doing now is concluding, or trying to conclude, something that's in their works, on and off, fixing people for year after year after year. The genocide of the Palestinian people, removal of the Palestinian people from the land that God gave Israel. God didn't give Israel anything. Henry, show them what they are. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, Crystal. My name is Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> one sec. We have some signs if anyone wants to stand with us. They're basically the message is cease fire. And so if you want to stand with us with your signs, we're not going to leave this space until Bernie Sanders talks to us seriously about stopping the bombing immediately. Bombing where? <laughs> In Gaza, sir. How is Bernie going to be able to do that? Bernie needs to make a phone Bernie call. Bernie needs to call for a ceasefire now. Biden makes what? a phone call, it's over. Okay, my because name it takes is Crystal money Zivon. to Zivon. Go ahead. My name is Crystal Zivon. And, uh, I don't want you to fall that way. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. My name is Crystal Zivon, and I, I first really understood about what's happening in Palestine when my daughter, who is now 46, was five years old. We were living in Paris, France. She had a girlfriend who was Palestinian. I didn't know that. We took her out for an afternoon. We were late getting back. Sabra and Shatila had just been destroyed. Her, her grandmother and two cousins were killed there. They didn't know that yet. They didn't know where they were, but I was late getting back. I came and I'll never forget the look on the mother of this girl's face. She fell to the floor in tears. She figured out that my last name was probably Jewish and was worried that I had taken her child. Later, she found out her grandmother and two of her cousins were killed there. So I became an advocate, an activist for Palestine. People, the media is calling Hamas, 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 Hamas. This isn't about Hamas. This is about ethnic cleansing. This is about genocide. This is about getting the Jews, I'm sorry, getting the Palestinians out of the territory. I have, I was writing a letter to the editor the other day. I said, all of a sudden, I, I thought about it. I said, I have two 21-year-old grandsons, twins. Had they been raised in the conditions of Gaza? Had they been raised where water is controlled, where how much food they get to eat is controlled, where they can listen to that festival across the way, but they can't go there? how there's 50% unemployment, yet they can't leave to get a job. If they had been raised in those, the soldiers can come into your house, can shoot your father in front of you, but you throw a rock at a tank and you are in jail. 7,000 Palestinians are in Israeli jails. If my grandsons had been raised there, I have to ask myself, would they be Hamas? Would they be fighting? against this repression. So I'm sick of the whole Hamas thing. They're killing babies, babies, infants 
Israeli drives the, the, the doctors out of the hospitals and leaves these infants to die. Uh, it's, you know, how anybody can call that humane, how anybody it's a genocide. Period. can call it anything but genocide is, is beyond me. It's evil. I watch every day. I cry every day. When they restarted the bombing, I literally cried the whole day. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just beyond comprehension to me that anybody, that anybody could treat another human being, any human being, that I could treat you, that I could treat you or you, the way that these people are being treated. How is that possible? Anyway, that's, that's it. Cease fire now. Would someone else like to speak? Come right up and, and face out. If we could hand those signs out to anyone who'll take one. There's one that says American majority. 68% of Americans want a ceasefire. It's a recent yeah. poll. So, I left your signs in the car because I didn't want what? them to get rained. I left your signs in the car because I didn't want them to get rained. No, but there's some more. We can hand them out or, and then we'll hear from this person. Um, so just to thank you for your sign, ma'am. So American, the American majority of 68%, it's a very solid majority. There's a poll that says that they support a ceasefire. They want the bombing to end. They know that children, that half of the population of this city that's being bombed are children. And they know that five to 6,000 of those children have now been killed along with their families. So uh, join us, please call Senator Sanders. Uh, we have information on his phone number. It's very easy to find. He needs to hear from you. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, totally. So I just wanted to share a little bit of history and specifically um, some of Bernie's own voting history. What I'm seeing right now is Bernie has re repeatedly affirmed Israel's right to defend itself against Hamas. He keeps going back to focusing on Hamas. In recent days, he has acknowledged that some of the retaliation, as he's calling it, have resulted in many innocent deaths. But the fact of the matter is he's not calling for a ceasefire. He openly said, I don't see how we can have a ceasefire with Hamas. And finally, he's saying nothing about military aid and stopping military aid to Israel. So I want to talk about some things that Bernie has supported in the past under very similar sentiments and how they didn't end up very well. In 1999, some of you might not remember this, he voted to support the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia. The NATO bombing of Yugoslavia was under much the same like um, circumstances. He said that Kosovo should be its own state. He talked about what was going on in there. To this day, the result of the Yugoslavian bombings by NATO have polluted the Danube. Millions of Southeastern Europeans have polluted water. There's oil, there's sludge, there's uranium there. There has been no cleanup of infrastructure, no cleanup by the river. Bernie Sanders supported this. Another thing, um, in, let's see, in 2006, uh, there was the um, gang rape of an Iraqi woman. This was widely believed to be, and said to be, the result of um, Iraqi soldiers. It later came out, and thankfully the people responsible were prosecuted. Bernie supported increasing funding to the Iraq um, invasion. The same thing happened in Afghanistan, where similar events such as the death of Pat Tillman took place. As we now know, that has been covered up as well. They burned his jersey. He died by friendly fire, but that didn't stop him from being a martyr to the American people. I'm seeing history repeat itself, and many others are as well. We are seeing these same narratives about these to use the words that others are using about savages, about Arabs being wantonly discriminate, like indiscriminate, violent. We're seeing this same rhetoric used and hyper-focused on to continue justifying the military support for Israel as it attacks Gaza. Now, I'm certainly not saying that someone who lost family members in the attacks on the 7th has any reason to be, like, doesn't deserve to be upset. And there is no doubt that this was, in fact, an attack. Well, what we are seeing right now is Israel has refused to cooperate with the United Nations when they wanted to launch an investigation to look at the killings themselves. We've seen now 3,300 cars are being burned by Israel. We're seeing many of the same things that took place 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Back then, they were used to justify military aggression. 
We're seeing that again, and they were later proved to be false, or at the very least misrepresented. But today we're seeing the exact same things take place, uncritically, unquestionably. I don't support that. I'm not willing to enter my third decade being alive, seeing America believe claims that will later turn out to be false in the Middle East to justify the killing of tens of thousands of Arabs. I will not support that, and neither should you. As was said before, two-thirds of Americans support a ceasefire. We should encourage Bernie to join us in doing the same. Thank you. Demand. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Encourage. Demand, that's Demand. right. Yeah. Does someone else have a message? They'd like to say something at the bottom of the ladder? Join us. Stand in front. I have to be loud because of the street. I think that we have, we see a, a lot, and we saw it in Iraq and Afghanistan, that innocent people are killed and people demand revenge. And that's understandable, but then it gets to the point where 10 times more people on the other side have been killed. And pro supposedly progressive senators are still saying Israel has a right to defend itself. America has a right to go into Iraq and kill a million people. No, we don't. No matter how much revenge we want, it doesn't make any sense. And it, it's, it's genocidal. And already 20 times more Palestinians have been killed than were killed on October 7th in Israel. So what is the point besides burning. killing innocent people? And, and we hear from Bernie to Anthony Blinken to Biden, People say, we have faith that the Israelis will follow humanitarian law. And how can they possibly say that? It's been a month, every single day, except for four or five days, they've bombed civilians on purpose because they have a system that they have a map of who lives in which building, they know there are civilians in apartment buildings. They've bombed hundreds of apartment buildings, not hundreds of little homes, hundreds of apartment buildings that have collapsed. The city of Gaza is destroyed already and they continue to bomb. For what reason? They say they're hitting Hamas. Probably they are, but can you really feel that there's a military solution at this point that is better than asking both sides to come to the negotiating table? And there may be more deaths after they come to the negotiating table, but I don't see how you can expect that killing 700 people every single day is better than trying to negotiate. And that's something that we've seen from America for a long time. And now you see it's more open than ever where the Israeli government, almost every top official has said that there is no innocent civilians in Gaza, which is genocidal language explicitly. And so I don't know how Bernie Sanders could go on every day saying that there's not, you can't have a ceasefire. Okay, Robin, would you like to speak? Sure. Uh, Robin Lloyd will have a few words, but I just want to repeat the issue here. The issue is that our senator, the second senator and our senior senator in Vermont, 
Bernie Sanders has not signed a ceasefire. Becca Ballant signed a call for a ceasefire, took a great risk to do that as a Jew. And Peter Welch just called for an extended or comprehensive ceasefire. Bernie Sanders, as progressive as he is, and as wonderful as he has been, continues to support a genocide. We are amazed, and that's why we're here, because we want Bernie to finally act in concert with everyone else in America. Two-thirds of America supports a ceasefire. Those are reliable polls. So let's do what the people say. Sorry, I just wanted to now. make the point. Ceasefire now. Okay, and I would like to expand the demand that Bernie support and invoke the Genocide Convention. Okay, this Genocide Convention, the 75th anniversary, is coming up Saturday. We have an event planned at the Fletcher Free Library on Saturday about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Genocide Convention. Genocide Convention says that any nation, now it's not likely to be this nation, but Bernie could perhaps appeal to a friendly nation like um, Denmark or um, or other other sympathetic countries to demand that the, gen the genocide convention be implemented. Okay. I have all the information. What's needed is a country to invoke the Genocide Convention at the International Court of Justice. We have to stop this. This is so appalling that, that Israel has reignited the bombing of Israel, and now it's the southern part of Israel, uh, of, uh, of Gaza. The people have fled from the northern part, now they're in the southern part, and now they're being bombed there. Please, we must stop this carnage happening. Thank you. Ceasefire now. 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 I have a friend in Gaza friend who texts me when he can. He's got four children and a wife. He lives in the north on a farm. He moved to the south. He's in Khan Yunus right now. I last heard from him yesterday during the day when he was, he spent $80 to get enough wood for them to build a fire. We don't, he says, don't believe the humanitarian aid, that it comes in, it goes to certain people, they go into the marketplaces and charge exorbitant prices. He sent a picture of me with the dog, with a donkey cart with this pathetic amount of wood in the back. I haven't heard from him. Last night, they bombed Khan Yunus where he is. He was in an, an, uh, an unrun shelter where he was supposed to be safe. But I don't know if he's safe. Every day, I think, am I going to hear from Yusuf? And I don't know. Why, why is this? Why is this happening? Why is our country not saying, fucking stop it? Woo! Stop it. You! That's right. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Woo! While we're here, I'll give another example of what I was talking about earlier. I think a lot of people might remember the case of Jessica Lynch in the early 2000s. She was a US soldier, she was kidnapped, and her story of being kidnapped was used as a lot of, you know, a rousing, you know, support for the military and our presence in Iraq. And it came out from her words herself Oh, let, let me back up and tell you the story. The story was that she was kidnapped, she got shot in the leg, but she kept firing. She fired until her gun ran out of bullets. She was heroically rescued after. That was the story that was told. The only problem was that was completely false. She said herself that she was not tortured. She said herself that she did not fire any bullets. Her gun jammed. 
The reason I mention this is to say that we're hearing very similar things right now from the hostages who have been released by Hamas. Now again, I'm certainly not saying that it's fun to be kidnapped, and I'm certainly not saying that nothing happened. But what I am saying is that despite clear overwhelming proof of crimes against humanity, what literally the UN said are crimes against humanity in Gaza, we're having a hyper focus on what is happening and specifically on Hamas to say, we need to keep doing this. Oh yeah, it's bad that some people are getting hurt, but we need to keep doing this because of Hamas. Despite the fact that hostages themselves are saying, this is not true. So once again, this hyper focus is used just as it was in the past to say, oh, you know, casualties are bad, civilian casualties are bad, but we shouldn't stop. That's bull, that's BS. We should stop and we should demand that Bernie say, cease fire now. Thank you. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. There's another thing about it. In, the, uh, in Vietnam, we had free fire zones. This is just an area on a map. They draw a circle or a square around and they simply say, there's nothing in there but the Viet Cong. So that was an area to constantly send in bombers, send in artillery shells, uh, just, put, and, you know, civilians in there, just regular people in regular little village huts trying to grow enough food to keep alive. Uh, we'll cover the place with depleted uranium, which has led to all sorts of birth defects. We wiped a lot of stuff out the crops, a lot of the forest areas with Agent Orange, also Agent White and Blue. And the result of that has been horrible, horrible birth defects on a large percentage of small kids. Now in Iraq, where we used a lot of depleted uranium, their whole area, <coughs> their whole areas where people are afraid to have children because so many of the children in Iraq have had birth defects directly attributed to the use of depleted uranium. It's a deadly, it's not just the bullets, uh, it's the uranium, and it's highly radioactive, and it's causing all sorts of birth defects and problems in the other age groups as well. My final thought was, when I was over there, the people who went after me, because I was the very first part of it, um, we had tanks, we had cannons, we had bombers, we had fighter jets. We were basically fighting a bunch of people with rifles and rock and bell grenades. That was pretty much it. I mean, even in Ukraine, it's the like Ukrainians watching shoot down a Soviet SU fighter jet. Boom. You know, sometimes they'll see a parachute, a lot of times they didn't. Well, Hamas, how many fighter planes do they have? How many tanks do they have? How many artillery? It's totally asymmetrical. It's just like when we fought the Vietnamese. They had almost nothing to fight with except their indomitable spirit to win their freedom of their country, and that's what I see in Hamas. So whatever sins they're committing, what I'm also seeing is third generation people in a concentration camp with no hope, no future, and these people have risen up and said, no, that's it, whatever it costs, we need to end this. How the hell they win? And the things that I'm hearing out of the Israeli government, my government, I'm ashamed to be an American. I really am. It's just, you know, I start shaking. I mean, how much, how much of this, uh, how much of this can you put up with? One war after another, America's business is war. We make all these munitions, all this beautiful military stuff, and we, uh, we sell it to other people, and the money comes right back to America because you got to pay the people that make all the bombs and bombers. So we're a war industry. When you really look at it, who's making all the stuff you're buying at the Walmart? It's instead of the little local store you used to go buy stuff at, we put them out of business. <laughs> what you're doing is you're getting uh, all Chinese stuff. It's all made in China. Or it's made in Vietnam, ironically, or Malaysia, or lots of other places, Japan, Korea. Dave. Pretty much what it's coming down to is America is mostly just making war material. And it's a great part of business to be in because you blow up a bomb, you take a rocket. You take a $300,000 rocket, you blow it up, and guess what? You gotta make another one. 
And your profits go up. It, it generates its own retirement for replacing the product. So and that's, Vermont's a part of that. That's We've it. We've got our F-35B. We've got beta technologies just signed the deal with the Army. We're a part of that war machine. Israel has 35. Israel has F-35s. Yeah, Israel has F-35. Pretty soon they might even send Vermont's F-35s. Send Argonne, send them to Iraq and other places. We want no part in this war machine. And as a Vermonter, Bernie should be saying the same thing. We don't want our welfare to be based on the military-industrial complex. Not in any way. This is Vermont. We have a huge, we have F-35 funding for our airport. Again, we have beta technologies. We don't want any of that here in Vermont. What are Palestinians? Look at the homeless. Who can afford to spend billions, trillions on war? Right. What do the homeless people get? Maybe they get a tent on a block for a while, and then a city will come along with the bucket loaders and scoop up the little few things they have. A little tent, a few family memories, a scrapbook with the baby's pictures in it, off to the dump. We can't even afford to take care of our own people, but our government keeps going into like extending the federal debt, raising the federal debt. We're spending money we don't have. We're giving it to people who do anything but benefit from it. I mean, nothing for our people at home. This whole country has got lost its mind. That's it. It's done. Does anyone else want to speak who hasn't spoken? Sorry, Dave. Anyone else who hasn't spoken would like to speak? Or, or would have something to say? Oh, gee, I thought they were coming for us. <laughs> Are they coming? I don't know. Uh, the cops are right there. All right. You're here. You're here. <laughs> kind of a perfect, perfect example of uh, we have our cops right here chasing away homeless people. That's, that's their focus right now. Again, the message here is to call Bernie Sanders and ask him to join the other delegation members of in Vermont. Demand that he join. Becker San Becca, excuse me. Demand that he join. Is to demand that Bernie Sanders join Rebecca, uh, excuse me, Becca Ballant, our, our representative, and Senator Welch, in calling for a ceasefire. He's not yet done that. It's very easy to call his office. It's very easy to email him. He needs to hear from you, his constituents. We are paying for this war. We're asking that the funding be cut off immediately until Israel stops bombing civilians. That's the message. Yay. Please spread it. Woo! Thank you. Okay. I don't know if the police are going to come or not. <laughs> Who? I don't know if the police are Are you ready for the police to come? Dave and I were, were ready to spend a little time in the Burlington jail, but in Burlington, uh, people are generally not arrested because there's real crime. Well, there is a real crime happening with our tax dollars. That's right. And so we uh, are here to put some things in perspective. A lot of the homelessness and drug addiction you see in our country is because we spend half of our taxes on the military, on, on munitions that are anti-personnel munitions and bombs, and we say, let's bring it home and take care of each other. Thank you. The number you can call if you want to call Bernie, it's 202-224. 5141. Again, we're imploring everyone to call Bernie and demand. Call 202 224 5141 and demand ceasefire now.